I'm Kevin, communication specialist with the North Little Rock Public Library. I'm here with somebody who is legendary in North Little Rock. Now, you may or may not know who he is, but you're going to find out when you watch this. It's Roland Burnham. Roland, good to have you here today. Appreciate you being on. Um, there is something that uh, maybe I think the way to describe it is by direction. There's something that I remember when I was a kid. I saw this rock in Levy. It was just off Pike Avenue. And then yeah. some years back, it got redone. And that was featured on Channel 4 several years, several decades back, too. It was something called the Balstovich. What is that? The Balstovich is an imaginative, fictional creature, creature of uh, somebody else's mind. Okay. He's no longer with us, but Mike Thomas is the one who, when he was in high school, he drew this on a high school desk at Parkview. Okay. 1978 in March was the exact date he drew this thing on the desk. And so he brought it to me at one of our band practices. And he said, what can we do with this? And I said, well, what is it? And it's just this head with these pointy ears and a triangle for the hair and triangle for the feet, triangles for the ears, actually, mm -hmm. and a guitar pick shaped head. So we go, well, what can we do with this? Uh, well, we can uh, put it on a wall and let everybody look at it. And so that's what we did. Okay. We, so we made the, I made the decision. We're gonna, let's put it on a wall. Okay. And it ended up uh, in, in Levy. Was it originally on a wall or was, was it put on that rock or how was it done? Well, it was well known in Little Rock before it was put on the rock. Okay. Tell me about that. Well, in June 1978, that's when we first put one up in Cantrell. Okay. Cantrell in Little Rock. And uh, it got a lot of attention. And we didn't want to tell everybody who did it. We didn't tell any of our friends. I told one person, and it turned out he had a he had a lot to say about it to other people. But uh, he's okay. <laughs> All is gone. He, All is yeah, you would tell right? people, and they'd know who it was. But then they really didn't know who it was because they didn't know me. So it was okay. And then about five years later, I wrote a book. I, I personally sat down and typed up this manuscript about the Balsavich. It's on my Facebook. You can go to the pictures. And it's also on my Balsavision Facebook page. It's also there in the pictures. So did you, you can read every every bit of the story. Did you do the drawing yourself? Or was yeah. it both of you? You did the drawing. He, he drew the original on the desk, and he never really drew it again after that. I'm the one that made it a reality and made it the 3D approach that I took was what we were looking for not just some cartoon character. Was there anything about it that really connected you to it, that really inspired you to go with it and run with it? No, it had a face on it, and I've always liked to do faces. I drew faces all through high school. It's what I was known for in high school, drawing faces. So when he came to me with a face with the, the triangles on the sides, I, we can make the triangles into cones for the ears and a sprout for the hair and mm -hmm. realistic feet for the feet. Instead of the triangles, you know, he had a cartoon, like a cartoon with the, the roundish head, the guitar pick, like I said. It uh, looks a little otherworldly in a way, kind of alien. Is, is, yeah. ha, have, has anybody ever mentioned that or is that, oh, was yeah. that the purpose of? Well, when it first came out, it was considered to be an attack by aliens or Satanists or Russians because of the name. Balsovich sounded Russian to some people, so they decided... Well, it's one of these three things. So aliens was way up there on the list, you know, <laughs> obviously. But it had no special meaning. No, there's never been a meaning behind it. Now, Mike Thomas and I did try to sit down and create a story behind it, but it just seemed so artificial and forced that we right. just, just left the image as it was. And whatever people want to think about it, that's what it is. Okay, the original one that was... On the wall on Cantrell, is that still yeah. there? No, it's that was 45 years ago. Is the building still there? A tornado took the last one. What I did in 2018 is I did the 40-year anniversary of uh -huh. So I replaced the one that used to be there 40 years earlier with the new one. And then the tornado on March 31st took that building, crushed the wall, specifically where the Balsovich was. The rest of the wall is fine, but where the Balsovich was, it just caved in. So it was like a direct attack on my drawing or a painting on that wall. Wow. By, weather, by the weather. How about the rock in Levy? How did that come about? 
Well, that's kind of a long story. I, I knew a woman way back in 1981. She knew somebody that knew U.S. Pizza Lady, and it all got to where we can paint this rock. The lady that owns U.S. Pizza right there next to the rock, she says it's okay. She wants it on there. She's uh, Judy Waller was her name. And I think she's still around. I don't know. But anyway, she did have that U.S. pizza. And she did allow me to paint on that rock. And I painted that ball switch with uh, another person, the woman that I was talking about. She was also an artist. That was 45 years. No, that was 81. That was 40 some odd years, 42 years ago. I'm visiting with Roland Burnham here talking about the ball switch. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just one of those things that just really caught on in North Rock. It's one of the things that just kind of makes us what we are for some reason. That's yeah. not the only one, though, now, the one that's on the rock. You redid that one some years ago, too. Well, yeah, it was just a white painting on a bare rock at first. Right. And that was the way it was for years. And then two strange guys I've never met or talked to came along and signed their initials to it. They painted a black background around the, the white paint I did. Then they tried to repaint the white line around it, and they did. But it was it was kind of oh, sixth grade level, maybe I would say. A little ganky. Yeah, it was, it was more graffiti than actual graphic, like I would hope it would be. So that was there for years. He even had a little cigarette coming out of his mouth for a while with the smoke coming up. I saw that. I got a picture of that. Anyway, I said it's time for me to revisit that rock and put the real face on there. Keep the black background but make it all white and put the shadows in there like it's supposed to be when we first originally designed it. So that's what I did. And still there. And it's still there. And that was in 2013. There are other ones in North Little Rock also? In uh, the filling station and the Spectators Bar and Grill, which is three blocks north of the Rock. Right. It's a pretty big one. It's white on a red brick wall. What inspired that one? Uh, the lady wanted it. The lady in Spectators. Mm -hmm. uh, her name was Glenn, I think. Anyway, she wanted it, and uh, all of her customers seemed to like the thing. And one of the customers, especially, he really he was a big fan, and he, mm -hmm. he sort of made this happen with that lady. She said, "Now I know the guy that can do this for you," and so she got one. And what about the one at the filling station? Now that was a uh, that was another guy. Uh, another North Little Rock residence who said, I can help you get one in here. And he, and he did. I don't know if I should mention his name, but, you know, if, if I did mention, he'd probably know who he was. But anyway, he knows those people really well. And he thought that I should have a ball switch in there. So he made that happen. So it really took a life of its own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I, mean, I, I never expected I'd still be painting the thing 45 years later after I first put one up at 21 years old. It's just, uh, it's kind of unreal, but I'm still willing to do it. But now I, I charge $100 if you want one in your house. And uh, otherwise, if it's a small one, it'll be cheaper. And if it's a bigger one, well, I might have to go more, but I always charge $100. Do you ever get requests to do them on other buildings or have those yeah. happen? Do you still do that? Oh yeah. There's, there's all kinds of houses in Little Rock and, and other places like in Maumel, I've got one inside the house there. So it's, uh, you can't uh, tell anybody where they are or they might get pelted or something. Right. <laughs> I don't know. What about uh, in Little Rock? Where are they located there? Well, let's see. Huh. They're not really there anymore. A, there's one on Armadillo's hands down there on Colonel Glenn that has really faded away. It was done in 2002, and it was in color. It was a blue one, but it's mostly faded away, and the building has since been burnt. So it's still there on the wall, but the inside of the building is burnt, and it's not a business anymore, but the boss is just still on the outside. Whitewater Tavern, is there one there? There is one on the Whitewater. I'm glad. I would have forgotten all about that one. It's in the back. You walk out the back door, and you should be facing it right away. As soon as you open the back door of the white water, you, you see the balsa bitch there. It's about that tall. So what else do you do besides balsa bitch? What, what other works? Do you well, I do uh, mainly fantasy type things, surreal and unusual, odd perspectives. That's, a, that's my approach to painting. 
you know, most people in a gallery like this, you'll see the dogs and the mountains and the water and the creeks and the trees and the still lifes and these things. They just kind of bore me to paint that stuff. I, I have, hate to admit it, but I just can't. I just can't paint. And I, I just can't do it. I got. I got. I can. Right. Yeah. It's not interesting to me. I, yeah. I've got to be different. What inspires you to paint? The uh, ability to see something different in the next painting, and that I don't even see it coming until I get there, and that's the main thing about. What intrigues me about painting is finding the image after I've started, knowing that I'm going to deliberately create a new technique that's going to create make this happen. So that's that's how I approach a painting. Uh, is there a painting and or a Balstovich that is your favorite? Well, how about just answer both of those questions? How about one and the other? Well, they're not, Balsavich is not the same. I, right. I don't even claim Balsavich as my own. Like, it's Mike Thomas all the way. I'm just the guy that put it on the wall. But the first Balsavich I painted is my favorite Balsavich, and it's the one that's long gone now. But that was 45 years ago. And Mike Thomas and I got a lot of adulation, I guess you call it, for that after they found out who did it. That was five years later. Cause Would you have gotten in trouble? Was it, yeah. was it, you would have gotten, so it was, they didn't like, they didn't, that, I didn't get permission on that building. You know, the very first one, we just went, saw that building and saw it was a perfect wall and we just did it. But we didn't make it look like a graffiti. So we avoided that little pitfall, but still the guy didn't like it. He said, as soon as the funds are available, I'll have it removed. That's what he said in the newspaper. He never did. Eventually they came by with the red graffiti and put all this, hateful stuff on there and uh mike and i went with white paint and we tried to paint as much of that off as we could in a bright sunny day well, it wasn't enough they said this is not gonna fly we're gonna just whitewash it so they did they took the boss switch off we couldn't reach up high enough to get all the red paint <laughs> off of it so didn't have the ladders with us anyway that was the fate of that first ball switch it got graffitied it's a, it's a common thing. Balsaviches are just not meant to last. They're there and then they're gone. I, the rock is amazing. It's the most, probably the most popular one because of its location mm. next to that freeway exit where everybody has to drive by it. When we first painted that rock, it didn't occur to us that this was going to be a, a really uh, high traffic area because at that time it wasn't. I mean, it was right next to railroad tracks and U.S. pizza and and that was it in that little area. But then people started getting their jobs and going to the freeway and traveling that little road. And they saw, look over there and see that rock. It just got a lot of attention. Did you think it would become as legendary as it? No, <laughs> not at all. I thought it'd be a couple of years and then people would just go on with our lives. It'd be 1980 and it'd be a new era. But no, 1980 came and there was still a popularity thing with it. It was still good, but I did lay low on painting them for a while until 2013. So there was a big space of time where I didn't paint any balls to it. It's very interesting. Uh, it's Roland Burnham here uh, with the North Rock Public Library. Roland, thank you so much for coming in and talking about this. It's just a real thrill to have, uh, have I've heard about it all my life, and I think a lot of us probably have, and to be able to find out more about it, that's, that's really cool. So thank you, Roland. You're welcome.